Hello again, it's John here. Um, in this video we are going to have a deep dive into branching and mainly the branch if you call branch if carry clear and branch if carry set and the way we're going to just look at how they work we are going to use an example of a guessing game now in the, it's a very simple concept user enters a guess we test if it's equal to the answer that's in the computer if it is we congratulate the user and end the game if it's not we test whether it's lower and report that it's too low or we test that it's too high and report that and then with those bad guesses we increment the count the attempt counter by one and then send it back to the user so the three branching commands we're going to use for this as I said is branch of equal branch of carry clear and branch of carry set and the reason we're using branch of carry clear and branch of carry set is because of the rules that I have stated before in the previous tutorial is that when you test a number with another number even though the zero flag is set or not set it means that it's equal to that number not equal to zero as if you was let's say load accumulator and it would test whether it was zero or not if the numbers are the same it sets the zero flag to be on which means that both numbers were uh, equal if the zero flag is off that means the two numbers were not equal but we're not using not equal because we we already know that it's either equal or not we already know that it's not so the other test is the ca branch of carry clear and branch of carry set test now if we test for branch of carry clear that effectively says that the number we're testing against is lower than the number that the user will have entered and same with branch of carry set we're effectively saying that the number that is being tested is either higher than the uh, or equal to what the users entered but the fact we're going to be testing for equal to anyway it that means we take that away from that uh, rule and it would be that the answer is greater than the uh, user has entered so going back to the game so this is basically going to be the game it's not very complicated and we're going to write this in machine code so I will show you what I've written in machine code to make this game work so here we are guess this number game and all I'm doing is I'm starting it in the usual place set up some variables so this is a kernel print variable um, an input variable uh, input routine from number which means that to, uh, to get a number from and get line or get a user input line got a couple of other variables here I'm using a macro to print strings out and then got some variables here in memory so we've got the guess which I've set to naught, which is equal to the break number to guess so that's the guess that the computer will generate which I've set to naught, and how many attempts which I've set to naught. then we've got a, a few strings so you you have now had uh, attempts and these are strings that we're going to report back to the user so nothing special there so this is where the crux of the code is so we're starting off and we're initializing the attempt num the attempt number of attempts and we're setting it to naught then we're going off to a random number generator which is going to generate a number between naught and 255 and then we're going to store that number in memory so it's all fairly straightforward don't have to worry about the random number generator the, that's a more advanced routine which we'll talk about in a much later tutorial 
we then go and get a number from, from the user. So we have to present an input uh, line with some text, grab what they have um, typed in and then convert it into an integer number and then pass it back and it brings it back in the X registry. So we store the X register into guess, which is the user's guess, and then we increase the number of number of attempts by one. So if the first guess it should be one. Then we transfer X or, or in other words the guess into the accumulator and then we do a compare with the guess with the number that the computer's generated and placed into memory. And this is where we then use the branching um, commands to determine the state. So it, we've already said if the u, if it's equal to, so if we're in this area here, was it right? It's going to let the user know by congratulating them and then the game. So we've I've created a label where it's going to go off and congratulate the user. So if we scroll down, we'll see here's congratulations. It prints the first part of the congratulations line, loads the guest number stores it and then prints the guess number out so it'll say congratulations you guessed it right in a number of attempts and then it prints out the attempts and then goes back and go let's returns it back to basic the next test is branch of carry clear which if you go to our rules if carry is clear then it means that the number was tested was less than the number being tested. So here we are. So it would be, sorry, your guess is too low. And we come over and we print out the text that says, sorry, your guess was too low. And then it jumps back to the looper, prints out the current attempt number, and then lumps back round. And then branch if carry set, and we know from this, the rule set here, if the carry is set, it's greater than or equal to the number. We've already tested equal to, so we know it's not that. So therefore, it is greater than. And we've got a similar function here that says, they are too high. From this, you would think, oh, what happens if none of those? Well, the thing is, it can't be because we're testing if it's equal, we're testing if it's less than, and we're testing if it's greater than. There is no other scenario that we need to worry about because they're the three. We would have caught them in those three. But even if by a miracle that it does fall through, we're just sending them back through the uh, incrementer anyway because this is where they come back to we print out what the, the temp number is, do a carriage return to make it a new line and then send it back to start the whole process again. Very simple and very convenient. Now remember that branching is only relational so it can only jump forwards 127 characters and jump back 128 so you have to remember that you can't have this branch here and then an awful lot of code like I've got here and say have it down here because that would be too far for it to branch and the assembler would fail in that case you've got if you've got big branches like that you would not test for branch if equals what you would do is you would test if it's not equal to because if it's not equal to it then you can do a jump so here instead of branch if equal branch if not equal round it to do the next test and then in, an instruction in there would be a jump to congratulations All right. so I can show you this we can modify the code and we can expl explore that if you want so here we go. So I'll let me run this so you can see it working. There we are. So it's all randomly generated a number and it's asking me to put in a guess between 0 and 255. So 
uh, start at 10. Your number is too low. That was guess number one. Okay. 240. Your number is too high. Guess number two. Okay. Well, get down and think. Oh, okay, let's uh, let's do an. Let's go to 100. Oh, too high. Okay. Um, 20. Too low. Okay. So 100 too high, 20 too low, uh, 60 too high. All oh, right, so it's a low number. Okay, 50 still too high, 40 too low, uh, 45 oh. 48 46. <laughs> oh, we got there in the end. 47. There you go. And so as you can see, we three simple tests um, and it allows you to jump relationally around the um, the code. So if we do it again what's your number? 47 Ugh. Oh I'm too high Oh crap. Right, okay, 30 Too high? Oh, 20 Too high? Okay, 10 Too low? 15 Too high? <gasps> 12 Two, oh, 11. <laughs> I'm not very good at this game. So, this is just basic, a, a, a quick way of demonstrating how branching works. And like I said before, we could, if your congratulations was too far, we could do this. We could say, branch if not equal, not equal. And then we have a new one called uh, a new label called not equal to number. And here we would have jump to congratulations. Now this should do exactly the same thing. So if we run this, now my random number generator would have restarted. So hopefully we'll know it's 47. So here we go. So we we'll, I think it's 47, so we'll do 40. So it's too low, 50. Too high, 47. See? And that is just using it in a different way, the branching. So we've incorporated, if your, if your jump is too far away from the code you're testing, you can use other commands to jump around and then basically to do the opposite of what you want so if you're branching if equal then you would use the not equal to jump around your equal jump which is further away than the relationship so it's a very simple concept branching remember you can only go forward 127 back 128 and it's relational to the point that you um, uh, are branching from. So if we if we just assemble this, so you can see the code, and you'll see the relationship between it. So here we go. We'll come down. There's all the messages. Here we go. So as you can see, it says branch if not equal. So this is three bytes. A jump is three bytes. So it should have three forward. There you go. And this one is actually 3e, so uh, you know that's 6, 48, 50 something bytes forward, and 32 is 48, 50 bytes forward. So as soon as you get to 100, 128, I mean the assembler will let you know anyway that you've you've crashed through your, your thing, but you've got to remember branching is only a, is a quick way of moving around your routine. If you want to do some long dist long distance move routine, then you have to use jump or go up. So I hope that this has informed you enough about how the branchings work in, especially, and they're the three common ones. So uh, four common ones. So you've got branch if not equal, branch if equal. 
branch if carried clear, which is branch if less than, and branch if carried set, which is greater than or equal to. There will be your four main branching terms that you'd be using in the future. There's the other ones, which is branch if plus, branch if uh, minus, branch if overflow, and branch if overflow clear. They are more specialised branching, but we can look at those in another tutorial um, in the future. So, I'm hoping that um, this has helped you. If you have any questions or comments, please add them into the comments history. Um, if you've come across me by accident and you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.